What is a red flag to you? I would never date myself. I'm, I'm in my no, no professional musician. I've had a much better year. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. We've really gone up in the world. You are booked, busy, and blessed at the moment, aren't you, babes? Because you are up and down, all around, touring at the moment. How is it going? Uh, I keep saying to people, I'm on my third pair of last legs. Um, so <laughs> I've, this is week, like, 12. We've toured America, we went to Japan, we went back to America, and now we're on our UK tour, and this is our last week. Oh, my God. How are you feeling? Are you just, like, when you say you're on your, your third last leg, walk me through what that is looking like and feeling like for you. Well, I would like a little girl rest and a little girl recovery, to be honest. <laughs> um, I feel like I need a girl lie down, a girl sit down, um, a girl cook a meal in her own kitchen, a girl see her parents, all of those things. But, like, also, I've had the best few months, so I'm living the vida loca. Well, I, went, I spent um, no actual time in Hawaii, but I did go to Honolulu Airport on a, on a transfer, and I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, so it's fun <laughs> to be in Honolulu Airport. You know, getting to see Hawaii from inside the airport, not being able to leave, that was really... That was a bucket list moment, almost. It's like almost a bucket list. Oh my god! <laughs> Did you at least get to see it from outside the window, or not? Yeah, no. I am. Um, I actually. It was. It was the trenches. Me and my guitarist, and my photographer. I like. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna treat ourselves. We're gonna go into a lounge. So we all pay for lounge access, and we all get into the lounge. And they're like, "Oh, by the way, we have no food, water, or bathrooms. No bathrooms." And they also had dubious amount of windows but we all looked out of one window together uh at, at the palm trees and we thought that's nice though so who said that touring was glamorous or being a musician and pop star not me i've never claimed it i've never claimed it the mega achievements just keep coming for you this year and you had your first number one album with the good witch and not only that you became the youngest british female solo artist to claim a number one album in almost a decade which is in Sane. Given all the hard work you've done to get to that point, how good did that moment feel and where were you when you found out? I was really pleased, especially I was just pleased for my whole team really. Like there's I've been working with the same people, some of the same people for like uh six, seven years. And everyone's worked so hard and everyone's really believed in in what we could do for the longest time. So it was so cool to achieve something like that. And we we're in Sweden, we we're in Stockholm. Uh, and I was with like, my band and my manager and my tour manager and we were all together. So it was really fun. And it, yeah, it's just like a cool, it's cool to put on your shelf, you know? Although I actually don't know where my number one's gone, true fact, because we were traveling so much that we, so we were traveling so much that my tour manager took the number one and just had it with him because also it's heavy. It's actually really heavy. I'm, I, I've got a baggage allowance. Again, touring, touring, not glam. Me with my baggage allowance. I'm not, that's not counting towards my baggage allowance. We do have room for awards. <laughs> No, I don't. I ha I need to bring two pairs of shoes, guys. And I'm trying to travel on hand luggage here. So um, I don't know where the number one's gone, but I do need to find it because I need to put it in my house. It has been such an epic year for you. And I think it's such a fab time at this juncture in your career to take a look back at your journey and how you got to where you are now. So let's take it back to the very beginning for you. When did you first get the bug for performing? I was writing songs when I was like 12, um, but I just liked singing and songwriting and I just wanted to do it as much as possible. Um, so I did it around the local area. That was me, that annoying girl singing in the pub with the old men. The old men like, shut up. No, they loved me. They actually used to call me a, a, an angel, which is sort of dubious now, but they loved me back then. I love it. And then you literally go from performing for old men to literally being signed, the first act to be signed by Ed Sheeran on his own record label that must that support from such an incredible artist must have empowered you in so many ways how do you think that relationship and friendships have really shaped you and encouraged you and what kind of advice has he given you that's been able to you to have the self-belief to get out there and do and achieve the amazing things you're achieving I, I mean Ed's amazing he's such a wonderful person he's a great friend he's a great great mentor and um, he's just so generous and kind, um, and he always has been uh, to me and to everybody. And so it's really amazing to be able to go on tour with someone like that and learn from them and, and see the way they like conduct themselves and conduct their business. It's just, yeah, it's really amazing. And I'm a huge fan, always will be. And it's given me lots of advice, of course, none of which is suitable to be said, uh, 
to you on, on the record, but it's all great <laughs> advice um, and all highly appropriate. No, I'm joking. Well, am I? Who knows? But um, he's just like, but he's the best. I'm like the number one biggest Ed Sheeran fan in the world. Uh, everybody knows it. Like when I was on the Ed Sheeran support tour, I would be there every single night just going, and I knew all my favorite songs. And it must have been when we look back now at what you've done to get to where you are now, there must have been so many times as well where you must have thought as well, oh my God, this is ever gonna happen for me. Did you, when is there a moment that you've really dug the deepest, do you think, to pursue your dreams? You have lots of little versions of that, um, but you kind of can't ever have that. Well, I've never had that to a, to a huge amount because then you would actually just give up. Um, but I, after I released my first album, sort of after the first week it came out, and it's funny because if I, when I say this now, the album did super well, it went, it went to number two in the charts, and, and I kind of had a low period where I was like, I don't know, I don't know if that's the best I'll ever do or the best I'll ever be, and I don't know if I've sort of peaked and I need to accept that. And I felt like that I was, it was crazy. I was like 21 and I felt like I was too old and, and I'd already had my moment and I wasn't cool enough or interesting enough. Um, just, you know, classic thoughts that everybody has. And, um, and then they put this album sort of, again, like there was, I, it's been amazing releasing this album. It's been a crazy year. Like, oh my God, I need a girl rest, but it's been amazing. And the response to it and the things I've done and the tours we've done have just been like amazing. So it goes to show it's not, it's not over till it's over. Even though no one was telling me it was over apart from myself mm. and my demons. Have you learned to really trust your own self-belief then? I've like had huge imposter syndrome with performing on stage and touring because that was never my strength really. I was always like the songwriter first and, and I had to learn how to be a performer and I always and I've always did and still do occasionally feel insecure about, you know, how I am on stage and I can't really dance and all these things. And it's like, well, how do I I've had to really like work hard and, and, and just sort of block out internal um, internal commentary on that. But one thing I will say is that I've always had this sort of like backbone of belief in myself as a musician and as a songwriter. Yeah, and I think that's in, I don't know if I could have gotten to where I am without having that because it's really hard and there's lots of people that doubt you and, and there's a million things that can trip you up and you can feel insecure about. So it's good to have. <laughs> At least one thing where you're like, no, I know that I'm good at this. I know that I can do this. On this series, we are talking a lot about exercising kindness to others and also ourselves. When do you think you learn to be kinder to yourself? Well, I, I really value kindness in other people. And, and I really hate judgmental people uh, or people who, who can't sort of be open-minded to... to other others and and you know and recognize that what makes someone else happy might not be what makes you happy but that's okay um and i really value that as a as a trait in myself and in other people um and i think it's really important the older i get the more i'm like it's really important that um yeah we just are really compassionate towards each other and 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 respect each other and and and, and are really kind yeah with especially i think nowadays you know it's like a more fraught and divided world than ever and i think the only way to combat that is to be really kind and compassionate and have really important conversations with people and 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 but do that with like real respect and, and kindness when haven't you been kind to yourself do you think you know everyone i have high standards for myself as does everybody else and there's always you know when you're especially doing what i do like it is very competitive and it's very comparative in its nature and it's and it's hard to not compare yourself to you know x y and z and, and these people you think are doing better than you or or look better than you or are cooler than you and i definitely have, have fallen um, victim to that so i guess it's just really important to remind yourself that there is room for everybody and also i'm sure like as these feelings you feel about somebody else somebody feels about you yeah, that's a key thing. And we're also talking a lot about anti-bullying week on this series too. And we're talking about bullying both IRL and online. And being a musician in today's world, you have to be very present online. You have to be involved with social media nonstop. Have you experienced bullying in real life or online in your life? I don't know if I would say I would use the word bullying, but of, co of course, like being a 
public figure on the internet. Like, um, it's it's inescapable. Um, you know, Twitter is a is a is a place that exists, um, and uh, yeah, it's inescapable. People are going to have opinions on you, and um, it's it's a fact of life. And and if you're if you're somewhat even somewhat a public figure, then you open yourself up to be discussed, essentially, which is interesting and um you know and people smarter than me talk about this but i i definitely have experienced it and it's it's funny because it's easy to say before you have you know it's just it's just like one or two people in comparison to the whole world and these people don't know you and and it doesn't matter and you shouldn't let it affect you but of course it does and and of course it's really hard to to read strangers you know say mean things to be honest is it quite difficult sometimes to not define your worth by numbers and streams and have you ever had to kind of readdress where you look at and define your worth in any way you could ask any musician right now i'm sure they'd all say the same thing it's just that it's like a like really difficult time to be a musician and and yet having you know real-time numbers on your followers and your views and your streams and your and your and your tiktok account and this and that and um there's never been such a numerical value on on like human beings and art and um when that's also your job and then that's what you do and that's also a way to sort of that you can see the impact of what you do even though it's not really because you, the impact is on like real people and their real life connection with the music but yeah it definitely is hard and i to be honest that is something though that as you get older you really do just see that you're like ah oh, this isn't the be all end all and like touch wood everything comes out in the wash and 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 I'm really lucky I have like amazing fans and I play amazing shows and I have an amazing team and like I'm so so lucky so I just have kind of taken the approach of like you know like what will what will be will be and what matters is the real life human beings yeah 100 percent. and the music industry is 100 percent changing in terms of representing and turning up for women but it's traditionally always been a industry that's so preoccupied concerned with youth image and desirability and it can be quite a pressurized environment i think in certain ways for a woman to be in that industry what pressures do you feel like you've had or been at the receiving end of as a female artist in the music industry sort of lots of subconscious ones and also it's not really you know i I always want to Add that I really do have like a really great team and I also work with a lot of women um and I'm I am very lucky I work with a great team I just think that there's it's just really obvious things you know there's definitely like there's been more conversation about what I wear and what my hair looks like I'm sure than some of my male counterparts and there's also an assumption that I'm not writing everything I make um and there's assumption that uh I you know I what I it's not okay to just be you know it's like what else can you do what else can you offer what else are you bringing um and I think that's an inherently very female thing you only really ask women that um but as I said I do think it's changing and it definitely has changed even within the time that I've been in the industry and um I'm really hopeful for like the next generation and also for my generation I think